venting can get you in a lot of trouble, okay? There, there was a lady, uh, she walked into a store. She purchased an item at this store. She took it home. She was unhappy with it. It wasn't working. She went back to the store, told the sales associate, said, I'd like to have a refund on this. Sales associate said, no, we, we don't do a refund on this item. We can't do that. And she said, well, I'd like to at least exchange it. She said, no, you, you can't do that. Well, the whole time this woman, she's getting angrier and angrier because obviously she don't want to hear no. She just bought the item. She gets home. She hadn't drove five minutes down the road. It doesn't work, right? Like, that's not fair. How's that fair? So she's just bubbling up. She's getting madder and madder, and she's wanting to start venting, right? And she says, well, I need to talk to your manager. So the manager comes out, and she tells her the same thing. I'd like to return this item, exchange it out, anything of that nature. And the manager looked her in the eye and said, you're crazy. I can't return that. Like, that doesn't make any sense. You're just, it's just bad luck. So the woman gets upset, and as she walks out the door, she turns around, and she's mad by this time, right? She's bubbling. She turns around and screams at him. She said, I'll never buy a lottery ticket here ever again. Venting or lashing out will make you look like a fool sometimes. In fact, the Bible tells us this in Proverbs 29, 11. Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. Y'all think about that when you're posting on social media? No matter how upset you are about any situation that's going on in your personal life, a social matter, a political matter, someone else's drama, you should never vent on social media. This trap, again, is extremely dangerous, and I want you to think about it, guys. This trap can ruin your entire lifelong reputation, literally, by the click of a button. No matter the circumstance, you should never vent again on social media, not even if someone attacks you personally. And I know some of you are like, well, Micah, shouldn't I? Shouldn't I stand up for myself? If somebody attacks me, why would I let them get away with that? Idiot. Redneck. Hypocrite. Uneducated. Ungodly man. Fake. Wolf in sheep's clothing. A lying pastor. A false prophet. And even the Antichrist. These are names that I have been called on social media in the last two and a half years. Me personally. I've even been accused of using fake emotion, well, they don't know me very well, to falsely persuade the congregation to give more money to me. I mean, they even said something about my designer jeans one time on social media. These are Levi's. I mean, like, seriously. I honestly don't care, guys, about what people think of me on social media that have those negative comments. I don't care that they've called me these names. The only names <laughs> that I'm concerned about anybody calling me is y'all calling me pastor, my wife calling me her husband, my kids calling me their dad, and my father in heaven calling me his son. I don't care what anybody else has to say. I'll just be honest with you. And that's the attitude that we have to have when we're getting attacked on social media, guys. Don't let things like this bring you down. Don't give them the time of day. Don't let them steal your joy. First of all, I need you to understand this. They're cowards anyway. I call it internet courage. You know, they were real tough, you know, a thousand miles away on their computer. They don't have the courage to step out in front of everybody else and, and, and say these things. I mean, they just don't. I'm just being honest with you. You need to use good sense and ignore the people that attack you on social media. Let's look at Proverbs 19.11. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. I'll tell you this, when I get attacked on social media, <laughs> it's funny. First of all, 
Kyle, Kyle, you know, Kyle's over media. And, and one of our, our largest platforms is TikTok, believe it or not. So y'all can imagine what people were saying about me on TikTok. Kyle would always say, you know, Micah, make sure you never look at the comments. You never want to look at those things. I didn't have to. I had other people come tell me what people were saying. <laughs> but I want, to, I want y'all to understand, this all started about two years ago when we really started to get in this larger um, social media congregation, this online congregation. And I remember one night I went home, and it was, it was eating at me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It, I mean, especially when somebody was talking about my jeans, like that crossed the line, you know. But I remember praying about it. I said, you know, God, I'm trying to do your work. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Why can't they see this? Why would they call me these names? Why would they beat me up with this? And he gave me a vision. And that was his son walking down the Via Della Rosa on his way to Golgotha with a cross on his back and people calling him every name in the book and he's beat up and bloody. He's fallen down. They're spitting on him, y'all. I need you to envision this. You know what he said to me? My son still did his job. Ignore him and do your job. That's how we have to have that mindset, guys. So the next time you get attacked on social media and somebody calls you a goober, ignore it, okay? Think about it. Really think about it, okay? I'm I'm obviously, I'm I'm kidding, but I'm, I'm being serious. Think about Jesus on that road and what he did for us and everything that he was called. And as bad as he was beaten, and here we are worried about somebody spreading a little rumor. Ignore it. It's not worth your time. We should always want to please our Father in heaven, and one way to do this is by reflecting his righteousness. But I assure you, lashing back at someone out of anger will never show the righteousness of God. I have biblical proof to back that up. James 1.20, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. You get angry and you lash out, guys. You're doing the complete opposite of what God wants you to do. Do you see this? It's in that one verse right there. It's pretty simple. I'm going to add this real quick, and then I'll go on. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about on this, on this topic. But so many people, again, start to worry about what other people say, what they think. Guys, you're never going to please everybody. I've said this on this stage before. You, you're not going to please everybody. Jesus Christ was perfect, and he couldn't please everybody. You're going to get beat up. And and what I need you to understand is your job is just to work as hard as you can to be a righteous person. And we're all going to fail, right? We've talked about that many times. But you get back up. You keep trying to be as righteous as what you can. And if you can please 99% of the people in this world, there's still 1%, guys. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't worry about that 1% because you ain't going to change your mind anyway. Don't even pay attention to it. Okay? Let's move along. Another way that the social media venting trap makes you look like a fool is when you vent about your personal life. This drives me crazy. Keep your personal stuff personal, guys. You need to understand that no one cares about your personal problems as much as you do. I'm just being I'm just being honest, thank you. Like, yeah, can I get an amen? Like seriously. When struggling with personal problems, don't make it known to the world. Go to the ones who love you, okay? I want to explain something to you guys. Every one of us have a circle, okay? We have a circle of people that we trust and that we love, okay? That's called your small circle, okay? That small circle, I'm telling you right now, if you got 100 people in it, you messed up. You messed up. Your discernment is terrible, okay? Okay? That should be what we call a small circle. Your outer circle can have 100 people in it, okay? But that inner circle, those ones that you trust, that you know you can go to, and you can vent to them about things to where you know not only you, it's a healthy vent because you're venting to them. It's in a private moment. They can teach you. They can mentor you. They can guide you through the problem because they love you. And I need you to know something. Those people in that inner circle, 
if there are people that just tell you what you want to hear, they need to go to the outer circle. You understand that? That's not the kind of people you need to surround yourself with, ever. Needs to be people that are hard on you, that want to see you grow. Amen?